The trouble with the BMW 330e Touring is that it's a bit like driving around with an upright piano permanently on the roof. Let me tell you why. There might not be another car on this planet that can do quite as many things as a 3 Series Touring, especially when it comes to this particular version. This is the hybrid 330e Touring. And I mean, look at her. She's a very classy lady. And according to my fellow Auto Express colleagues, fast, comfortable, very well made, practical, can go on pure electric mode as well, super fun to drive. All of that is marvellous. But surely, this car can't be that perfect. There has to be a compromise somewhere. I just refuse to believe that a car like this that's so perfect actually exists. So today, I am on a mission to find its fault. I'm on it. Right, straight away, it's not looking good for me because this plug-in hybrid version might just be the toughest opponent of the lot. Right, BMW says it will do 156 miles per gallon. My goodness. 156 mpg i mean i might as well just give up now but i won't because that number makes me a bit suspicious so we're going to be putting that to the test a little bit later on there is a two liter four cylinder petrol engine underneath the bonnet which is turbocharged so it gives you 182 brake horsepower lovely and then there is the electric motor that's integrated into the gearbox so that combined gives you 249 brake horsepower lovely so no this is not a slow coach this thing is rapid like golf gti rapid let me show you i'm going to put it in sport mode oh everything turns red i love it here we go oh okay did my face go i felt like my face went right that is 420 newton meters of torque that just shoved me back in the chair just then. <laughs> and what it does is it gives you 10 second bursts of like extra boost, which is 288 brake horsepower. Oh, now that gets you 0 to 62 in just a smidge over six seconds. <sighs> so yeah, straight line speed. I think you're fine in this. You're just fine. You know what I'm going to say? Lovely. Okay, I have to be honest, it doesn't quite sound as creamy as like a six cylinder would sound. But no, it does feel nice and nippy anyway. Still puts a smile on your face. And here's the thing. This one is a 330e X drive, so we've got four wheel drive. Not only does that mean huge traction and security when you're can in it, but it also means you can take it off road. Oh, lovely. Here's the thing, I was going to try and find somewhere where I can drive it on grass or just kind of off-road a little bit and there isn't anywhere around here. So I'm just going to have to tell you about it. So this has the X-Drive system. So let's be honest, if you're going to buy a 3 Series Touring, it's not very likely you're going to be driving it up Ben Nevis. Instead, you'll probably take it down a muddy lane maybe, you'll get stuck in some snow and some ice. So this is the perfect car for handling stuff like that because what it does is it moves the power into the wheels that have the most grip and when it goes onto a wet surface i mean it just sticks and goes it sticks and goes it's really sure-footed and then when you take it back onto the main road i mean it's just got that nice sharp agile feeling that is part of what makes the three series touring so appealing that rhymed didn't mean for that to rhyme but it rhymed very nice but look, I mean, it handles corners really well. The grip, it's so sharp. Oh, lovely. It's blooming good fun. So what is the issue with this car? What is the fault? I'm struggling here. So what is the downside? Well, I mean, you won't find it in the car's comfort or refinement. The ride is good. And BMW hasn't made the car super stiff to give it that agile handling. It still absorbs bumps very well. The eight-speed gearbox is lovely and smooth as well, and the 3 Series is hushed at motorway speeds. You can even run the 330e in electric mode to completely shut the engine up. Right, okay, this is getting tricky now to find a downside here. Oh, but I think I might have found one. Let's take a look at that boot. 
So all the hybrid stuff is great. And when it's driving around on electric mode and it's nice and quiet, lovely. But look, if you go for the hybrid version, they have to put the electric gubbin somewhere and they have put it underneath the boot floor. So what they've had to do is raise the boot floor up. So it's eaten in to 20% of the boot space. So look, if you're doing a Tesco shop where you just want to chuck your bags in, fine, not too bad. But the moment you start stacking, if you need more space, you are better off with a regular free series touring. That's something to bear in mind, but the boot is still 410 litres, which isn't too bad. It's a bit small for an estate, but it still grows to 1,420 litres when you fold the seats down. There's plenty of headroom in the back as well. You've got knee room that's pretty good. Annoyingly, I'm going to need to look harder for any big drawbacks with this car. Right, while I'm driving, I just want to give a big shout out to the interior design in here because, OK, it's not as pizzazzy as a... Is, is pizzazzy a word? We're making it a word. It's not as pizzazzy as a Mercedes, but everything is really well built, really well laid out and just really well thought out as well because it's things like the iDrive system, right? The iDrive infotainment system is honestly the thing that steals the show because you don't have to reach to touch the screen. Everything's on the clicker look down here. So look how easy that is. I can just tap through everything. It's got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Everything's really functional, super sharp, super crisp, lovely. Plus the driving position. I mean, these seats and the steering wheel, everything is so adjustable that you just find comfort like that. BMW are just so good at that. If I had one annoyance, it would be the gauge cluster, like the digital dial screen, because it's got so much stuff on it. It's got so much information. It's got bits up the side, the map in the middle, and other bits on the side, and then bits underneath. It's too much information. I literally, all I need is I just need to know how fast I'm going. Maybe a bit of map, maybe a bit of media stuff. Too much, it's too much. I do like that it turns red when you turn it to sport mode, though. I like that. Yeah, you tell them, Nicola. No, hang on a sec. Can we just take a little closer? Does that say 49.4 miles per gallon? 49.4? It's meant to do 156. What's going on, BMW? How can it be so far off? Now, here's the thing. I've only been driving around a little bit and the battery's already gone flat. And that's because BMW claim that you get 34 miles worth of range in this car, but actually it's more like 20 to 25-ish. If you run out of electric power, you do have the petrol engine to fall back on, but then you're carrying around more than 200 kilograms of electric systems that just aren't being used, which is a disaster. It's the equivalent of driving around with an upright piano sat on the roof of your car. 200 kilograms worth of weight just sat in your car doing nothing, eating into your miles per gallon and eating into your efficiency. So do plug it in. I know it takes three and a half hours to charge up this battery, but you've got to do it. It's plug-in hybrid. It's the idea. It's better to be in electric mode. That said, there are benefits for certain users. If you mainly do short trips and you're able to plug the car in every night, you can run the 330E as an electric car for most of the time, which will save you a packet on fuel. The hybrid's low CO2 emissions of 46 grams per kilometre result in a really low benefit in kind tax rate of 11% as well. But then again, the 330E xDrive Touring costs more than 50 grand to begin with. So this car is going to be the perfect car for a lot of people and it's going to tick many, many boxes. But this plug-in hybrid version isn't going to be all things to all people. I mean, I guess it just comes down to how you drive it and your budget. And if you plug the blooming thing in. Look, it is still a fantastic car, but for me personally, I'd be very tempted by the cheaper and lighter 320D xDrive Touring. And that one's got a bigger boot, so... Look, it might not sound or go as well as the 330E, but it'll be fast enough in the real world and you might just get even better fuel economy without having to plug it in. Now that is a car that's even harder to fault. <laughs>